here, and I wish I was playing footy at the moment. But aside from that, no, I'm very confident. Our uh, boys are in a good headspace. So I saw some positive signs last week, so hopefully we can continue on from that. Go one one step further and hopefully get our first win for the year. Look at that. McDonald again straight down the ground. Hall oh. just was total disdain. That owned the corridor in North Melbourne. Beautiful kick. Oh. Zerha! From 50, kicks it to the empty square, it'll bounce through, look at that, from one end to the other. Oh, that is beautiful football from North Melbourne. Welcome back to Footy Classified. It's been an unthinkably horrible start for the Adelaide Crows. Winless and hard to see where the next one could come from. And Kane Corns, this really is flashpoint for this team. No doubt about that, Hutchie. And considering they had 10 players with 100 games or more, they, that, that, that performance was unacceptable. It's not a young rebuilding side that they put out there on the park. And you've got to go back a long way to find a side as poor as this, statistically anyway. And it's 1974. If you look at it, the last time a team was 12 points behind second last on the ladder after round nine was Melbourne in 1974. So that's what we're looking at. You know, of course, the last winless team was Fitzroy in 1964. And no rookie coach has started zero and 10. So that'll be the test for Matthew Nix on Wednesday night. But this intrigued me and I'd be interested in Lordo's take on this one. I thought it was quite demeaning to the players. I mean, these are AFL footballers who 10 of them played in that 2017 grand final and you need to go back to basics like that. I don't know what was said, but I didn't think that was a great look for, for particularly the players. Not so critical of Matthew Nix. The, the fact that he had to deliver the message like that um, was a little bit demeaning, I thought, for the players. No, I, I couldn't care less. If you use cones, you lose water bottles, you use Powerade bottles, doesn't matter. I even heard Brendan Vivola tweeted today, UK, saying that in the state game, Bomber Thompson used it when up Victoria. The best players playing use drink bottles. That's just a, something he would have thought on the spur of the moment to about shuffling across and all that sort of thing where they're not protecting each other and the, guarding the space right and all those sorts of things. But on the Adelaide Crows, they need a little win or two. Even the GWS Giants in their first season and the Suns in their first season got at least one or two wins. But every week, Carrie be coming up with ways. How do I get the group up? What should I be asking them to do? But he's be running out of answers, I'm sure, at the moment. Well, is he only coach to be this bad with this win-loss record, who isn't under the pump, really, is he? Nobody seems to be blaming Matthew Nix. They're blaming the CEO and the chairman. They're blaming the lack of resources around around the coach. And, Craig, they're blaming what has really been a, a series of really poor list decisions over it, several years. It's indisputable that the recruiting has been poor. And the challenge they've got is it doesn't look remotely like they've bottomed out. Like, they haven't yet paid the price... Of, now, there's some good players among you, admittedly, but there are some misfires, Lord. And that they haven't yet paid the price for the bulk of that recruiting in the last five years in these drafts. So I feel like that pain's still the next two, three, four years ahead for them. Yeah, I think that uh, what comes in the next draft, I think I think there are some good players there. Obviously, Malera, Dude, uh, Chase Jones, you know, there's a few good players. And I even like uh, Worrell and, and Mackesy, who they've got in recent years. But when you're losing every week, you, you don't look too good. And that, that's the issue for the Adelaide Crows. Kane, who would be you know, the, the best senior players that they've got this year? Who would you say would be top two in their best and fairest on form? And, and it's hard to name too many, and that's what makes it difficult for mm. some of these young kids at the bottom end. I think, it, I think you're right on that. It's hard for these youngsters to play well when the senior players have let them down. Now, I've been told that they did turn up unfit after the, the coronavirus break earlier on in the season, and that set them back a long way. But probably Tom Duda is the one that has performed to expectation. And I'm interested in the review that they did at the end of last year. Now, we know Brett Burton was moved on. We know senior assistant coach Scott Camperelli was also moved on. But what else came out of that review? I wonder what Jason Dunstall's thinking. He called the game on uh, Saturday and, and witnessed the performance. But this is what I would do out of the review. As to Hutchie's point, you've got to review the list management decisions. Now, it's not just Justin Reid. It's Hamish Ogilvy, the head recruiter there. They've got to be look at that. Now, why do they get so many players wrong and overlook some guns that they should have got, particularly South Australians? The CEO, I think it's time. Carol, you've been alluding to this for some time, but Andrew Fagan still seems to be um, remaining in favour somehow. I'm not sure how with the mistakes they've made since 2017. Matthew Nix clearly needs more support. He needs a hard edge around him, a senior assistant coach who 
can shake things up a little bit. And whilst you're rebuilding, you can't do it all with youth. And that's the mistake I think they made, letting go of Keith and Jenkins and Jacobs and Ellis Yeoman and, and the rest of the players' bets. You've got to add some support around them. So top up with some Brandon Ellis types who's gone to Gold Coast to try and get that winning culture there. And a new chairman is coming. Rob Chapman is standing down. Now, the obvious one is Grant Kelly, who's the owner of the Adelaide 36ers over here, passionate South Australian, extremely successful businessman and wants the job. So he's the perfect man to take over as chairman and shake up the board a little bit. It's a tough board to change because it's an appointee board, but he would be uh, one of the quite a few, outstanding uh, external people to be appointed. Yeah, quite a yeah. few, including Wayne Jackson, I think, have knocked back the job with not the right time for them. It, uh, this is not an indictment on Tom Duday, but it's an indictment on their leadership that a player so young is their acting captain, I reckon. There is clearly a leadership void there. And the other thing that Kane hasn't mentioned and we've talked about before is why players keep leaving Adelaide. And it's been happening for a long time. It's a, it's a even broken, when they were having success on the field. It's just a broken yeah. footy club at the moment, isn't it? And it needs... It needs the a fresh signs have been there for a long time yep. and they ignored them to their peril, Craig.